Hi, welcome back to the workbench. Today we're taking a look at creating a mic stand out of an old lamp, specifically a spring lamp, this spring lamp, with a weighted base. If you like the video, please subscribe down below or leave comments. If you want to see any of the other audio equipment I've got here, like the Behringer or my Raspberry Pi Zero uh, custom audio rig for network recording, I'll be happy to do a video on that at some future point. I just didn't know which would be interesting. And this is what I was working on at the moment. I used to have a microphone mounted up uh, up in the top of my, my workbench here. It's just a standard wood frame workbench that I created for doing this stuff and working on my projects and whatnot. But that didn't really work out with the condenser microphone. Is it a condenser microphone? Anyway, whatever the studio microphones are, it didn't work out well with it. Creating a microphone stand out of this lamp, or rather the swing arm from the lamp. So to do that, Pretty much just need to take off all the lamp parts, and I think it's going to convert right over, but we'll see in a minute. My impetus for doing this is I was having trouble finding exactly what I wanted for a microphone stand on the internet, or at least for any kind of a reasonable price. And uh, I'd rather have something a little more specific to what I'm doing, something that'll fit here on the bench that's easily removable. I mean, I already have a... Uh, Orange Pi based recording system. It's a Orange Pi Zero based recording system that plugs into a Behringer and condenser microphone that I use normally. Either put it on the bench or store it over on the storage area when it's not in use. And I think this will be perfect for that. This one has a weighted base. It weighs a good 10 pounds or so. So it's not going to easily tip over if somebody just knocks into it, which, face it, that's a problem with the mic anyway. You don't really want to knock into things when you're recording, so I think that'll be fine. But I was also seeing if I could possibly get this out of here without completely destroying the wire. Because I've got a few different lamps that need to be rewired, so I can actually make use of that too. Ah, there we go, perfect. Let's see if I can get it out now. And if I'm not missing my guess, this is just screw, ah uh, yeah, screw on terminals. Excellent, and they're polarity mark too, so when I go to put this back in, into a different application, I can easily add a plug back onto it, either this one or whatever makes sense, although this does have those nice little heat resistant sleeving, sleeves, which I'll take off to route it out, but now I should be able to get this out of here. Eh, maybe clean that up a little bit quick so it doesn't catch in here while I'm bringing it out. I'd have to clean those off anyway to make any use of this thing. Awesome. And that's that. I think that gets our cabling and the old electronics that were in here out of the way. At some point I might actually run some wire through here to do something else. Either add... Well, hmm. can't think of what else I'd add on here, but... There might be some other applications where I'd like to have a swing arm adjustable. And I could probably reuse this for other stuff. Let's see if it... And it does lock in place okay. Then I can always tighten that up a bit with a M4 bolt. If that doesn't still work. Yeah. Well, actually, there's the problem. Just tighten this over here. Hold the nut in place. There we go. Cool. So that's working properly now. All right, let's see if the mic stand works on this. Moment of truth. It's a bit wobbly. Oh, okay, so it locks in on the other side on that. So this is just going to be sitting in here anyway. Um, but I should be able to get around that problem with a few washers, I think. Let me see if I've got the right, right diameter washers to handle that. Looks like a job for 5 sixteenths. There's plenty of those. Let's see, I'm guessing four. Let's see if that works. Eh, maybe two. Maybe 
three. Since it's just compression fit, I just want to get as tight a fit as possible without actually threatening to break anything. Oh, let's see if this will fit. Might need the other, yeah. All right, so I'm going to need the other screw as well. I'll have to use the original, the original part from the fan. No, nah, not fan. The original part from the light to hold it in place. I'd have to drill it out otherwise, and no reason to do it really. So I might make some custom shims for this. As you can see, that doesn't it doesn't fit super well. Although, let's see, that might be just fine. Let me see if it's tense. Oh yeah, that's holding okay. Awesome. So there we go. Got a mini swing arm set up for the microphone now. That appears to be working pretty well. Nice. Well, that'll work for my desk recording. I may have to add some extra pivot points in here or some better tension on some of these. Because it doesn't seem to, let's see, it doesn't seem to hold all that well in, in any position down here on the bottom or move that much. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of curious. It doesn't really move much on the bottom, although these springs would suggest that it's made to move a bit more than that. Maybe not. That's an odd, oddly limited, that's an oddly limited range of motion for that. But that's okay. I think it'll still suit my purposes just fine. Let's see if we can, yeah, actually. Right like that. It's probably good. Awesome. So with this, the Orange Pi Zero is just set up to stream the network stuff, the audio, over to the network when it's recording. I intended to put a small display on the outside of it so you can watch the levels on the recording and adjust them on the Behringer. Uh, currently it's just set up to do uh, SSH over the network, so you SSH onto it and you can watch the stream over a curses shell in real time, and it just displays the level so you can adjust the Behringer correctly, depending on how far away you are from the mic, and record. It's got Wi-Fi, you can connect up a network cable, usually that's what I use, 100 megabit, which is just fine for recording audio only. It's also got the option to record to the internal memory in here, which is an SD card. Currently a 8 gig SD card. And it'll record WAV files on the SD card, and then it bumps them across to the network share when it connects back up. And it all seems to work pretty well. I haven't gotten the latency down for the monitor connection yet. If you plug a headset into there, it'll monitor the current current recording. And it'll uh, give you an idea of what you're, what you're putting out. It uh, does work fine, but there's a few seconds, maybe a second delay on it. So it would be more useful if it was a real-time audio output. But I'll have to see what... Uh, Pulse Audio has for options on that if it's possible. Otherwise, I might have to throw it directly at the device uh, rather than using going through Pulse for that. Should work okay. And let's see, the audio equipment I'm using over for here for drive the microphone is a 48 volt injected Euphoria UM2 by Behringer. This actually works really well, and surprisingly, there's no problem injecting the 48 volts off USB from the little orange Pi Zero. I haven't any issue. I've run it quite a few times to test it out and do one piece of recording for a friend who needed to do some some recording for a commercial video he's doing, and it, it worked fine. There wasn't any issue with it. Audio came out pretty crisp. We checked it out. No issue. So yeah, I'm going to get back to actually doing the video I was going to do, and hopefully that gives you some ideas of something you can do on your own. In addition to the swing iron lamp, I've also created some clips to hold the cabling on secure. What I found was that it wasn't actually a very good cable option, and I didn't really like using the uh, twist ties for it, so I went with these clips. Let's see how they work. I haven't actually tested them out yet, but they should be a fairly tight. Oh, yep. Ah, awesome. So they're a fairly tight fit. They're about 10 millimeters square, I think, although you can check the design. I've got it up on GitHub and Thingiverse, so, and Prusa Printing, on their new site. 
So you can check it out on either of those. You can just grab the design and print with it, or you can modify it however you'd like. The licensing is fairly liberal on there. There we go. And let's see how it works. Ah! There go the batteries. Good and tight. Alright. And you want to leave a bit of slack for the slack for the bend. There we go. Now, no more cable wobbling over the place. So this build worked out pretty well. I'm happy with the swing arm. It worked pretty well. I tried it out already. The um, the cabling was a bit messy with the twist ties. They would wobble all over the place. So these nice square 3D printed clips seem to be working fine. That'll prevent that problem. And that's about it. There's not too much to build in these. You can certainly do it yourself. And I do recommend hacking stuff like this on your own because... Well, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. It works pretty darn well, and I couldn't honestly find anything quite like this for sale, at least not for any reasonable price for what it was. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them down in the comments below. Please subscribe. And if you want to see how any of the other stuff works, like the... orange pie, which is now actually set up <laughs> poorly. I need to make a case for that. Or the Behringer or any of the other stuff. Just let me know and I'll uh, take a look at that in the future. See you next time.